Hi, my name is Mike Brightman, author of the SketchUp Workflow for Architecture. And I want to take a moment today to uh, present some of the uh, construction document strategies that are presented in my book, The SketchUp Workflow for Architecture. So uh, keep in mind that the book, it's, it's a uh, complete set of standards that your, your team can work within. Uh, I cover model organization, layering, styles, uh, templates, everything you need to do everything that I'm doing here today uh, is, is all included in this book. You can also go to brightideasconsultants.com and that is where that is my website where I offer uh, online training, live training events, and also private training. And then also I have a forum that is called sketchupexchange.com and at SketchUp Exchange that's where you can join in on the conversation. You can download some of the files that I've actually created, uh, SketchUp models and layout construction documents. You can download those and pick them apart yourself. So uh, some good resources for learning this system, but definitely recommend buying the book and uh, attending a training. So let's get started. The first video is designing in SketchUp. So I'm gonna use uh, my rectangle tool and let's just start out by uh, drafting a let's see we'll go um, 20 feet comma 10 feet enter so there's 10 feet by 20 feet and then we'll throw another uh, rectangle on the back of that and maybe we'll just copy these in by three feet and three feet and carve away what's left all right, so uh, what we're designing today is a, let's just call it a cabin. So we have kind of a living area here, and then we have a, a bathroom and a kitchen area. So uh, I'm gonna copy this over by eight feet. And that doesn't leave a whole lot for the kitchen, so we'll maybe move this a foot that way, and this a foot, so 12. So now our, our bathroom, eight feet, eight feet, so we'll, we'll just make that assumption for this. This will be all right for um, what we're doing here today. And then let's just add another uh, two feet onto our living space. So now that living space becomes uh, 12 feet by 20 feet. That way we have like a bedroom, a little living room, a little kitchen, and a decent sized bathroom. All right, so now uh, as you're, you're designing in SketchUp, you can use any number of tools, you can use guidelines, whatever uh, you, whatever's your favorite uh, process for that. But always make groups. So this is my floor, I'm gonna make it a group. And then what we need to do is draw our walls. So I'm gonna use my rectangle tool and draw a rectangle at eight by eight. And then we're gonna pull that up by let's say nine feet. And then to, to create your walls, what you do is you use the push-pull tool. It's almost always easier to extrude a plan horizontally rather than trying to extrude it vertically. So that's what I'm doing here is just kind of uh, keeping it at eight inches as I go around and pull this out by eight. And if you tap control or uh, op was option on the Mac, you can leave a copy of the starting face behind and that's what allows you to turn the corners like I'm doing here. So we'll pull those around and pull this out by eight. All right, so now um, there's our exterior walls. I have a plugin called Delete Coplanar Edges, and what that does is it wipes out all of those extra lines that are created with one click. So plugins are definitely uh, a real powerful tool in SketchUp, and those are covered in the book as well. So we're gonna take all this stuff, make it a group. So then we have some interior walls. So I might use a guideline for this, and let's say our interior walls are only gonna be four inches. So we'll draw across here, come out by four, tap control again, and then here's our next wall, like that. And we can do the same thing here, even delete coplanar edges. Sometimes you'll lose a face that you have to draw back in, but that didn't happen this time. And then I'll just draw a guideline over here, and come up by like seven feet, draw an arc, and make the bulge at 12, gotta complete that arc. So there's our kitchen, and then we're gonna need a door into the, the restroom here, the bathroom, so uh, we'll come off of this wall by four. Uh, maybe we should do uh, 32 inches actually, 
So we'll leave room for like a counter there and then maybe a tw 28 inch door. And then we'll come up seven foot, uh, let's see, seven foot six. All right, and then a rectangle tool and we'll punch a hole through that. And then control E is my keyboard shortcut. That wipes away all my guides. I do a lot of creating guides and then just wiping them out. I do like to, to use guidelines a lot. Okay, so now we have our interior walls. I need to triple click and make those a group. So now we're, we're staying organized. But now what we wanna do is add a few windows. So I'm gonna double click into my exterior walls group. And let's see, maybe I'll draw a guideline here and come off of that by 24 inches, 24 inches, and then up by, let's say, 48. And then off of that, let's do another uh, 36. So our over our head height, our seven foot on the windows, uh, that's, that's fine for now. So we'll draw a rectangle here, maybe copy this over to our midpoint in the restroom and we'll have it sitting up higher. So those will be the same windows. And then over here, we're gonna want, uh, let's see, we'll come over like five feet and then let's say a 36 inch door and our next guideline will match to that. So here's our door. And then we're gonna come up by, let's say, I uh, will say 36 inches. And we'll come off of this by 24 and we'll go 36 and draw this in there. So just being pretty loose and, and uh, well, precise with my dimensions, but the design wise, uh, design wise I'm being pretty uh, quick with this. And we're just gonna leave this wall uh, solid and this wall solid. Uh, maybe throw another window over here though, uh, because it's such a small space, maybe we wanna leave some wall space for a TV and a bed over here, but uh, we can always change that. That's a good thing, so. All right, so come off by 36, 36, and we'll call that 48. So we'll do the same uh, pretty, um, lots of windows in the kitchen here. So that's okay, it can always change. So I push that in by eight inches, and I can double click, double click, and we'll come over here, double click, double click, and double click. The push-pull tool has that memory that allows you to repeat the last push-pull. Tap Control E, and there's uh, our, our grids are wiped out, so we're good to go there. All right, so we, we're keeping things in groups, and next uh, we wanna throw a roof on here, and let's just kinda give it a, a generic roof for the time being, so I'll just do that. Again, I triple-click, make it a group, and I can hit Control H, and that hides the rest of my model. So that's a pretty handy shortcut as well. So I'll offset this by, we'll just say 12 inches for now. And we'll get rid of that line in the middle, pull it up by six. And then I'm going to draw a line straight up by, let's say six feet. Pre-select this roof, go to my follow me tool and send that around. And then I can intersect these faces with the selection. And what's left behind is the roof that is normally that'd be a pretty difficult roof to kind of use inferences to, to figure that out and create that roof. So there's a little bit of cleanup associated with it, but that's kind of a cool shortcut. All right, so now we've got that roof all set up with our hips. All right, so not the most attractive roof, but we're gonna leave that alone for now, and uh, that'll be a good opportunity for us to work on the design a little bit later. All right, so now again, uh, this is grouped. So we're good there, we have our floors grouped, and now what we need to do is add a few windows and doors. So I'll go to my rectangle tool, group this, and then I always make it a component, and then I'm gonna make a copy of it over to here. So let's build our window here real quick. We'll offset by two, and push this back by eight, and push this back by four. And then we'll go to our paint bucket tool and select uh, maybe a wood, for now, if I hold down shift, I can paint everything with one click, and then I can go to my translucent, uh, translucent materials and paint my glass on there. All right, so there's my two windows like that. And then I'm gonna make a copy of this window 
all the way over here to the back. And even though it's not the same size, it's still much easier to just make this unique and I can adjust this window to fit this other rough opening like that. And then we'll make a copy of this over to here. And let's go and copy this one here. And I'll use my rotate tool and let's pre-select that. And we'll rotate by 90. All right, so now we've got some windows in here for our rest, our bathroom, our kitchen, and our living space. And then one more piece we need to design here is our door. So again, I make it a group and then make it a component. And then we're gonna double click in there and we'll uh, control H to hide the rest of the model. We'll push this back by 1.5, offset by six, maybe move this up by another six inches. And of course, you could always grab these uh, door components from either the 3D warehouse or form fonts uh, so you don't have to always create them or if you build them once you can always just uh, save them in your own collection so that's that strategy is definitely covered in my book as well alright so now we're going to sample this paint everything and then apply our glass as well okay alright so now let's hide our roof uh, hiding entities is really a tool it should be treated as a tool so we're, we're not layering just yet we're just gonna hide that to get it out of the way and I'm just gonna move this back by four inches all right and let's always uh, it's always a good idea to save this to my desktop temp I'm gonna call this uh, we're gonna call it our cabin and we'll replace whatever we've got there so uh, things are coming together. We've, we've got our design kind of roughed in. We've got our windows. We've got a door. Um, and uh, so now, let's see, we're going to add a few materials to uh, progress our design. So we'll go to our brick and cladding. And maybe I'll just, I just want to paint the outside with this material like that. And then we'll go to our roof and maybe I'll just select the bottom stuff and paint that with our wood trim for now. And then go to our roofing. It's always good to track down uh, other materials rather than just these default materials that come with SketchUp. Uh, if, you use, if you use these SketchUp materials, it makes your, your models look like everyone else's. Uh, so, uh, and then let's, let's modify this siding just a little bit go here and make this more like I will say 18 inches tall and then uh, we'll match it to that color and then desaturate it lighten it up a little bit something like that okay so uh, the, the general feel of our cabin is complete we've got a roof uh, we've got our exterior walls we've got our interior walls and and now uh, I think that we are ready for model organization so uh, definitely check out that next video and also be sure to look at brightideasconsultants.com and sketchupexchange.com and pick up the SketchUp workflow for architecture either online or in a bookstore near you